Here's some quick business first. Um, yeah. Um, no, on a serious note, uh, I just got elected to be vice president of the Maryland Writers Association. So. Yay! 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 Woo -hoo! Yay! Woo -hoo! Like that. I, I didn't seek it out. The rest of us dirt bags. I didn't seek. I didn't seek it out, but um, <laughs> but since I have oh. it now, I feel it's like my obligation to invite any of the writers out there to please join the organization. Blah blah blah. MarylandWriters.org or something like that. Um, or you can go to my website. And I'll probably put a link to it one day. Anyway, uh, pissed on. It wasn't my first job. But it was the first I ever worked during the school year, not just a summer gig. I was great at it, too. I mean, we're only talking fast food here. The McDonald's on Dundalk Avenue near Willow Spring Road. But it's where I developed my work ethic. Like most of the fresh meat, I began my career on the grill. I became the master of the short-lived McDLT, one of Mickey D's attempts to compete with the Whopper. Soon enough, I was training other new hires on the grill and was moved to the front to take orders and ring sales. There was even talk of promoting me to assistant manager during the summer. For a 16-year-old, life couldn't be much better. And it wasn't just how successful I was at flipping burgers and taking orders. I made lots of good friends. One of the managers, Rob, bri bribed us at closing time by plying us with pot and gin. We'd crank the OJ machines. We sold the little plastic tinfoil top cups to the public. Mix some drinks, smoked a bit of herb, and get wasted. The breakfast crew would come into the cleanest, best prep store in Maryland. Rob would even squeeze as many of us as he could into his little two-seat Fiero and drive us home. My family liked all the food I brought home that would have been otherwise thrown away. Nowadays, they might donate food to homeless shelters and soup kitchens, but back, back then it would all go to waste, straight to the dumpster. The cooler managers would look the other way while I stacked bags full of double cheeseburgers, fries, and cherry pies at the end of my shift. My parents and sibs would actually wait up, if I wasn't getting home too late, for a late night feast. I was a hero. There were villains, however. One was named Mike. He was a particularly lazy, fat-ass manager who spent most of his shifts, once the day shift managers were gone, parked at a table in a far corner of the dining room, sipping coffee and chain smoking. He'd hand his keys over to his lackey, this girl named Tia, for voids and other register issues. Tia took this as a sign of power to lure it over the rest of the peons. So while Mike hid in his corner like a troll, Tia would scatter off like a roach to find her own crack to hide in. Now, once you're at the register, you're not supposed to walk away unless the manager knows. One day, I had to go to the bathroom really bad. No surprise, since we got to fill our little courtesy cups as often as we like. Mike was unseen in his corner, adding more yellow to his fingers and teeth. Tia, as usual, was nowhere to be found. I figured one of them would have to show up, eventually. I kept taking orders and ringing customers, and then I realized I was trembling. I could still take orders, but my voice was halting, and I had to focus most of my concentration on not pissing myself. I looked around. Still no Mike. Still no Tia. At this point, I was in serious pain. Finally, I had a brilliant idea. Maybe, I thought. Just maybe. If I let it out slowly, most of the urine will get absorbed into my underwear and not show through my pants. So I did. I continued taking the customer's order while slowly, carefully releasing the, con the contents of my painfully overbloated bladder. I was handing the customer change when I realized that, as good as my plan was, my tidy whities just weren't holding up all that liquid. I tried not to panic as I felt the warm wetness of my urine drizzle down my legs. The pants saved me. Back then, the uniform pants were a heavy, far screen polyester. I looked down. I could feel that, the, that parts of my pants were wet, 
but they didn't look wet. Also lucky for me, I had drunk so much soda and the piss was so diluted that there was no smell to speak of. When Tia finally showed up, I was furious to the point of tears. I promptly excused myself, ran downstairs to the employee bathroom, and threw my soaked underwear away. The other great thing about McDonald's uniform pants of old, they dried quickly. Uh, da -da -da. They dried quickly. Oh, by the time my shift was over, a couple of hours later, it was like nothing had ever happened. Regardless, I wasn't going to let that happen again. Neither Mike nor Tia were around, as usual. Uh, when I found myself in a similar situation a few weeks later, I was working the drive through This time, I abandoned my post before it was too late, ran down the stairs to the employee bathroom, and relieved myself the human way. I was able to dart right back up, undetected. However, as soon as I opened my register, I realized something was terribly wrong. There was money missing. I noticed it right away because a customer had paid using a $50 bill, and that 50 was no longer in the register. The first moment I could, I asked Tia about it, thinking perhaps she had pulled it from my register to make change. But she knew nothing about it, or so she claimed, which to me meant she had taken it. No one else could have. I was worried, but it was the first time any of my drawers had come up short. Not too big a deal, right? Wrong. I was called down to the manager's office at the start of my very next shift and was promptly fired. I tried to explain exactly what was wrong with their location, about lazy, fat-ass Mike and thieving, power-hungry Tia, but all the general manager cared about was policy. Policy dictated that any shortage of $50 or more could be dealt with by termination. It didn't matter how promising I was an employee, that I was the master of the McDLT, or the, or the king of customer service. All that mattered was that I could be fired, so I was. I was too embarrassed then to point out that I had pissed myself. And there I was, pissed again. This time I was pissed off. My mother had this saying for people who said they were pissed off. It's better to be pissed off than pissed on. I always thought she was right. But as, I walk, but as I walked out of McDonald's for the last time and what would turn out to be a very long time, I couldn't help feeling that I was both. Mm -hmm. Thank you.